Hey guys, what's up? Team 3D Alpha. Um, big announcement. Team 3D Alpha is going to France. That's it. Uh, if you guys remember, I made a video about going to Washington to get my passport um renewed because it was expired. Yes, I'm a French citizen. I'm actually I'm African. I, I was born in Ivory Coast. My father's from Benin. My mother's from um, Burkina Faso. They met in Ivory Coast. Um, they played the banjo, so I was born there. Um, long story short, so I spent the first 10 years of my life in Ivory Coast and then the next 12 to 13 years here in the United States of America, actually in New York City. That's where I learned English and that's where I grew up in Harlem and Staten Island. But anyway, so I'm going to France for, for one reason. Um, the, my, my parents were divorced before I was even born, so I grew up with my mother. You know, I didn't really have a father growing up. I mean, my father was alive, you know, and we'll go visit him probably like once a month. But I really didn't have a connection with my father, so it was... I mean, you know, I'm not going to whine about it. It was it was kind of tough growing up because, you know, you have a single mother and then you have, you're the only boy in the household. I had an older and a younger sister. So, um, it was tough. No big brothers. My big brother's on my father's side. So, all the boys were on his side. All the girls on my mother's side. So, I grew up as the only guy, you know, pretty much bored as hell. My mother was really strict, so I wasn't allowed to really go out a lot. I wasn't allowed to have friends come over a lot. So, it was just me and my, you know, me and my two sisters. So, I'm stuck there playing fucking Barbies with them and shit, playing fucking hopscotch. It was terrible. But anyway, uh, so when I turned 10, we came to the U.S. And like I said, I, I really didn't have a connection with my father because, you know, he was just the guy up there. Uh, and, um, you know, as I got older, I had a lot of hatred, a lot of a spite towards him. I, you know, I mean, I wasn't knowledgeable, so I used to just blame him for for being distant. I mean, because it's tough. I mean, you, you go from, from Africa to America, it's a big transition. You know, you got to, the culture is different, the people are different. And then you in New York City, you don't speak English. You know, you speak is French, you know, you're trying to fit in, you're trying to, you know, find a place, uh, you know, to put your feet in. It's tough, you know. And then you don't have big brothers, so you get bullied all the time. Obviously, I started high school at age 12. I was 12 years old studying high school, so I was bullied all the fucking time, man. It's not until, I mean, I, I was a senior at 15, you know, I started college at 16. It's not until I turned 15 that I, and I was big enough to, I mean, think about it, at 15, most people go through their puberty at 13, right? I started high school before my puberty. My puberty was in like my sophomore year. I was a little bitch in high school, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? It's not until I got like 15 that I started standing up for myself and, you know, fighting the bullies off and shit like that. But it was a really, really tough child, you know, childhood and, you know, my teenage life. So I moved out of my own when I was 17, right? I'm trying to make a long story short. I moved out of my own when I was 17 in New York, got an apartment um, with my sister, roommating, stuff like that. My mother went away. My father was still in, you know, in France and Africa, wherever he was. So we really didn't have a relationship again. And it's not until I got depressed, you know, sometime around 18, 19, started moving around the U.S. And uh, I dropped out of college because, you know, it was it was not challenging for me. I was getting straight. I'm not bright. I was just getting A's, but I was I was bored. And I had no sense of purpose, no sense of fulfillment. So I traveled a lot in the U.S., moved to Texas, moved to Alabama, you know. And now I'm finally here to try to get back in school. But during this transition, I reconnected with my father. You know, we reconnected. We started talking emailing and I realized man you know when you come out of a depression you don't you have no more hatred for anybody you know what I'm saying you you don't judge anyone you, you just want to be friends with the whole world because you know what it's like you know that human life is fucking pathetic you know what I'm saying we're gonna die one day anyway all you could do is make the best out of the hands you know you you know you were dealt with so I, I reconnected with him and he decided to um uh you know you know we we started talking the question that I couldn't ask my dad growing up I was able to ask him now at 22 23 years old you know, a lot of you guys don't, you really underestimate the importance of having a dad. I don't care how bad your dad is. The importance of having a dad is crucial because that's where you're from. That's your root. You take a plant out of his, you know, out of his root, what happens? It withers away. Even if you take a, a branch out of his tree and you, you know, put it somewhere else, you attach it to a different tree, it won't grow the same because it's not where it belongs. You have to know where you're descending from. I mean, I didn't know about my grandfather. I didn't know anything about my fucking history. You know what I'm saying? So I started asking him these questions, you know, especially now that I'm interested in history. And he answered, uh, you know, you know, gave me a few answers. And I realized, wow, man, at 23 years old, I'm having a father-son conversation. The very first one. That actually means something, you know. You know, a lot of my friends, they, 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 they take for granted the fact that their father take them, takes them out fishing when they were boys. Took them out to the park. Took them out to the ball game. I didn't have that shit, guys, you know. I just stay home and watch Dragon Ball Z all day. That, you know, that, that, that was my father, you know what I'm saying? So um, take don't take that for granted. Honor your father, honor your mother. You know, it's, it's really really important. So this year he emailed me. And he said, "Hey, um, 
I want to get all the family together, you know, in France. Your your brothers, your sisters, father's side, mother's side, doesn't matter. He wants all his children to be together in one place for two weeks where we can catch up. Like I said, I have three brothers that I haven't seen in 13 years. I haven't seen my father in 13 years, my three brothers in 13 years. I don't even know what they look like. I could pass them in the street and not even recognize them. My little brother is now 14, 15 years old. When I left Africa, he was a baby. So think about it. That's weird. My older brother is 30 something. I don't even know. See, so it's bad, you know, and my father realized that. He realized, you know, you know what? Let's get the family back together. So I'm going to France um, from August 1st to August 15th. Uh, of course, I'm going to work out there. I got to find me a gym there. It's going to be great. I haven't been in France for, like I say, for 12 years. I used to go there all the time when I was little. So it's going to be epic. If, if some of my subscribers are in, on the, in the Bordeaux region, hit me up. Hey, we might meet up. I'm going to bring my camera there. I'm going to bring a lot of memory cards that my homeboy sent me. Shout out to Jonathan for sending me those those memory cards. I'm going to make a lot of videos and show you guys uh, French and my, my journey there. I'm really looking forward to it. I really got a lot of questions to ask my father. I want to know about him. I want to know what we have in common. You know, all the questions that I couldn't ask in 23 years of my life, I want to ask them now. So I'm really looking forward to that. And um, guys, wish me, you know, wish me luck. It's going to be a 14 hour ride, you know, so it's going to be crazy. I'm going to read a lot of books, obviously, and I'm going to, as far as the meals go, I don't know, I'll see. But, um, yeah, that's the announcement for now. Uh, oh, by the way, I got to leave you guys off with some wisdom. Like I said in my other video, I write, I write down my wisdom quotes on these index cards. Um, this one I wrote June 14. He that took action and failed has gained more experience than he that is still thinking. Now, this is about people that hesitate a lot. He that took action and failed has accomplished more. And has gained more experience than he that is still thinking. If you have a decision to make, make it. Take action, regret later. Life is short, guys. Believe it or not. Make decisions. Don't wait for the perfect moment to strike. That's only for like really, really, really important situations like financial decisions. But as far as your fitness life, as far as your 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 daily life, you want to take action. You want to be the one that pounces on opportunities, all right? Why are you thinking an opportunity may go by, right? I'd rather try something and fail it and Keep thinking if it's the right decision. And by the time you're ready, the opportunity already passed you by, right? So take action. Even if you fail, at least you gain experience, right? You there's no you cannot gain experience just sitting down reading a fucking book, right? You got to read, but then again, you got to get up and go ahead and try something. All right, that's it. That's today's wisdom quote. Um, Team 3D Alpha. Check out the website. Richard is doing a very great job. LowBudgetLeanMuscle.com. Check it out. Join the discussions. Put your feedback out there. This video is too fucking long. Subscribe. Yo, chill! <laughs>